Hello and welcome um, again with uh, something new, something very interesting and something very exciting. Um, as I was uh, continuing with my lecture series uh, regarding synthesizing number of monomers uh, during my MPhil and my PhDs, uh, so I thought that today again I must uh, share something, I mean new, something uh, new for you people which I have experienced when I was, uh, I mean, uh, much more energetic than now. Uh, nowadays and when I was young and I was very I mean in a form so that uh, I could uh, I've gone through all those uh, difficult steps and now when I think uh, of I mean when those all all those things I mean they come to my mind again I feel extremely you know uh, fearful and I feel scared that how and I doubt myself sometimes that how how I did it I mean it was something really very tough and time consuming and uh, especially when you are I mean inhaling so much of the uh, chemicals though we used to have the uh, fume hoods with us and sometimes they were working sometimes they were not working so it was like that and we were careless as I mentioned earlier that as you know uh, we were just kids so we were careless so we never and nobody I mean forces us even to I mean be careful about the carcinogenic uh, or I mean the um, solvents that are I mean can harm our lungs, our whole respiratory tract, our whole digestive system. I mean, it can affect any part of the body. Now, when I, uh, I mean, I go through the side effects, they can, um, they can give a human, human, right? So, well, anyway, that was uh, the phase that's gone now. I'm here again. So, I'm Professor Dr. Moina Akhtar Mughal from Dr. Amekazi Institute of Chemistry, University of St. John Shiro. And I'm here again with my uh, something which I have experienced in my research journey. So I am very happy again, definitely, because I uh, learned a lot, a lot more than others who are working there and who have been working there. And I learned a lot of other things uh, regarding the research uh, work because I have been, I mean, in this, um, this synthesis uh, part uh, since uh, for a very long time. So, um, I've been, uh, uh, I have uh, synthesized a number of monomers and number of uh, resins and polymeric resins after that. So I had a lot of experience in that. I gained a lot of experience, though there were a lot of trials. There were, I mean, sometimes there was, it was never a hit and trial method. You have to, I mean, to, uh, you have to go through all the steps. You have to follow all the steps. You have to be on that track you are supposed to, you are supposed to be, uh, you are told, you are supposed to be, I mean, and because, you are being focused every time, you are judged every time. So you were very much, you know, one has to be very much cautious that what I'm doing and I have to be on that same path and I have to follow the steps that are supposed to be followed um, by um, that other scientists have followed uh, before this, my experience. So I've been, uh, uh, I mean, following, all those things and yes we uh, did fluctuate from that method a little bit sometimes a little bit more the timings that is recommended there we used to subtract or add the timings to match uh, i mean to get the results because sometimes you know we were not getting the exact um, i mean i mean um, the things we are looking for the facilities we are looking for for example sometimes there was a lot of uh, issues like electricity sometimes because the uh, heating source is a hot plate hot uh, or a heating manual and it i mean runs with the electricity so i mean uh, there were other issues also which i'm not mentioning here right now it's full of issues university of sin <laughs> that in those days it was very difficult and uh, again, I would salute all those people who have done their PhDs during those days because uh, research was something very difficult. And it was actually Dr. M. Mekazi Institute of Chemistry uh, where the research actually it originated from that institute actually. Uh, when I joined in there in, nine, in 1996 as a research associate, uh, there were 19 professors, PhD professors working there with me and I was the junior most and the only female there. So this was something, a brief introduction about Dr. Moina Mughal, right? Now there are a lot of females there, um, but when I joined there, I was all alone. Okay, 
So I had my, I mean, uh, the knowledge and uh, I had uh, that power. So I, I was, I mean, I was always, I mean, uh, I used to get the things a little bit late, but yes, I did it. So I want my uh, viewers and my students, especially those who are in this research journey, those who, are, who have just started their research work, those who have just um, written their uh, synopsis, uh, or th those who are going through, I mean, the initial stages, or those who have, um, I mean, have been awarded AMPHILs, um, so I would like them to, I mean, see all these uh, steps which I've gone through, which their supervisor have gone through. So it would be something, you know, uh, a lesson for them also that how their supervisor, uh, I mean, faced everything. And then, you know, it's a long period. When you are in the research journey, it's a very long period. It's not a matter of um, six months or eight months or nine months. No, it's... Uh, long journey when you are in a AMPHIL or in a PhD. So you come across a lot of things in between that. And especially when you are involved in teaching there as well as you are on the research side. So you encounter a lot of, I mean, distractions, but with the distractions, you are supposed to be focused on your work. This is what I want to tell you right now. So I don't want to, I mean, um, uh, continue with that discussion. So come to the point, let's start our uh, topic today. Uh, I mean, Today I'm here to uh, give you some or share with you uh, a new monomer again, a synthesis of a new monomer, uh, and it was something you can say uh, one of the difficult monomers which I've synthesized, uh, though because um, uh, it's uh, I mean it has got a very pungent smell. That compound was name was peridine. So peridine was basically was very you know. Uh, it has a very pungent and very irritating smell, and uh, it. And then afterwards, when I I read up its uh, I mean side effects, I was really scared. Well, so uh, it is actually my compound today is five five methylene based uh, two pyridine carboxylaldehyde, and I would abbreviate with MBPC. It, as you know, it's again a bunch of words, so we have to I mean um, uh, have to abbreviate them, and I have to make them a little bit shorter. So it is MBPC, 5-5-methylene based tuperidine carboxylaldehyde. So let's start the slide share. Let's slide share the slides. So that's it. Uh, yes, this was uh, my compound. Uh, it's synthesis of 5,5-methylene based 2 pyridine carboxylaldehyde. And I just mentioned here that it's MBPC, right? MBPC, that is methylene based pyridine carboxylaldehyde. Well, I called it a high performance monomer. Why I called it a high performance monomer? Because yes, it proved itself to be uh, something, you know, really extraordinary because um, uh, uh, it was uh, its melting point when I, I mean, went through all the process of synthesis, I recorded the melting point. It was a bit lower as compared to the rest of the monomers I've prepared, right? And then, uh, of course, when I condense it with the different uh, diamines, I got the great results. I mean, I have condensed this through the process of polycondensation. I reacted this with a number of amines, diamines, and I got uh, amazing results. I've polymerized, um, I mean, 14, 16 polymers and shift-based resins, shift-based polymers, and then I reacted them with different metals to form polymetal chelates, and I did the characterization of all those. I mean, monomers, then the shift-based resins, ship based polymers and then their uh, ship based uh, polymetal chelates. So, I mean, it was a very long journey. And then the applications, and I've applied them also. So, uh, this synthesis, and then afterwards, the steps that are supposed to be followed is very, very, you know. Uh, um, tiresome, it's um, hectic, it's tiresome, but it's interesting also because you have that, I mean, you have that ambition at that time that you are going to achieve the goal. And that's the main, that's the, that's the point that uh, makes you a winner, that makes you win, right? So I never lose hope. I, yes, I lose hope for a time being. Yes, I, I mean, get myself, my, I am a bit low sometimes, but then I again, God, God has given me that, I mean, energy, I get up again and I start from where I've left. So this is uh, the, I mean, uh, lesson for all those who are trying to put me down. 
I'm not going to lose that easy. I'm not a quitter. I am not at all a quitter, right? I won't quit that easily. Uh, whatever I want to do, I do it. That's it. That's called Dr. Moina. <laughs> so, Alhamdulillah. So let's start the slide share. Okay. I would like to start from here again. Uh, now the assembly setup here was, of course, uh, the things we were needing in uh, our this uh, reaction to proceed or to reaction to go on. We need, need we used to. I mean, we needed a lot of things. That is, of course, if we st if I start from the glassware, I was needing a different sized. Uh, uh, what do we call it, flasks, that is three neck flasks were used in this particular type of uh, synthesis because uh, as I mentioned earlier that uh, I, this reaction goes on in an inert atmosphere. That means nitrogen gas was supplied constantly throughout the reaction procedure that runs almost uh, for the period of 22 hours. So, um, I mean, we needed a proper glassware. All Pyrex glassware was used and then, of course, um, a, a stand was needed with the clamps so that uh, we can fix the hot plate over it. And, of course, a support jack is there so that we can, I mean, move the uh, move it up and down according to the uh, to the requirement needed there. If we want to cool the sol solvent, we have to, I mean, uh, fix it, uh, fix the flask with the clamps. And we can, I mean, um, load uh, the support jack down and look, we can lower it down. And then you can, I mean, um, the heat would be uh, a little bit more, much lesser. And then it, the compound can get cold. And if you again wanted to raise the temperature, you can uh, pull up the support jack and you can again, I mean, um, provided the heat that is needed at that time. So uh, that is also one of the th things that is needed, of course, and a condenser, because this reaction goes on uh, with, the, um, uh, with the, of course, the, con the condensation reaction. It needs a condenser and, of course, um, a long time refluxing will be done, so needed a reflux condenser. And then the tubings that are supposed to be attached to that condenser, the lower one where the water that is goes in and the upper one where the water goes up and then it flows down right into that uh, sink, right? So um, that's also that one, one of the very important things. And then of course the Bokanash funnel for fil suction filtration. Uh, it is supposed to be there. Then different types of thermometers were used, right, to maintain the temperature, to record the temperature of the reaction, make sure that it should not exceed um, to the uh, to, um, uh, exceed the, rec uh, the recommended uh, temperature. And then, of course, uh, different chemicals uh, were uh, needed. That is, of course, uh, the mm, two pyridine carboxylhydride that was very pungent. Oh my God, that was so. I mean, I had a severe headache after using that uh, parathene carboxylhydride. It was too, 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 too aggressive. Well, so I used that compound for a very long time. I was in touch with this compound for a very long time, and it definitely harmed. Uh, it definitely harmed me. Okay. No, no more about me. Back to our reaction. Okay, so uh, actually, when I, why I'm distracted? Because you know, when uh, I'm explaining, not uh, it's not like a storybook that I'm reading from a book. No, it's something that I've experienced as a, as a teacher, as a researcher, as a student. I've experienced all these things. So that's why I'm sharing with all those young researchers who are there, who are going to, I mean, start their research journey. So they should know that how they are going to. Uh, come across all these steps one by one so this is important for them i mean they're lucky they can see all these things right now now in our days we didn't have these facilities so it was a little bit difficult to get the internet access it was internet access was uh, nowhere so uh, i mean nowadays a candidate is more a student or a researcher is more luckier or than us but still you know you can see us uh, that God is great. We have, we are, are blessed. Alhamdulillah. So, well, uh, let's get back to the, this. Uh, I mean, uh, setup of an assembly. So we needed all these things, and then the clamps are needed to hold the condensers. And of course, a little bit of grease is there. Grease is also needed to, I mean, uh, uh, to uh, to be applied to the joints of the condenser 
wherever because I forgot to tell these, uh, explain this one very important point that all the joints of the condenser and other glassware where it is, I mean, connected to the connecting, um, uh, to the, I mean, this thing, uh, the, the flask, the condenser is connecting to the flask. So that part will be jammed if you are not going to grease it. So um, within the heating, I mean, during the heating process, it is supposed to be greased before that all the joints that are uh, joining the two glasswares together are supposed to be greased, right? A thin layer of grease is applied and then it is revolved like that. I mean, if it's a, there's a condenser like that, fitted over and this is a flask, you will hold it and hold the condenser, you will apply the, uh, I mean, uh, grease inside a little, um, you can say you will take a drop of grease you will take and you will put it inside you will apply it inside of the uh, flask and then you are going to fix the condenser inside it and you are going to rotate the condenser like this when you will rotate it it will be evenly spread it inside the it will create a covering of a very thin covering of the grease inside the i mean um, between the walls of the condenser and the flask right so in this way you are going to grease all your i mean uh, joints or well, um, the glass uh, where the where ever the glass is there right because uh, if you will not apply the grease, these joints will be all, you know, they will be freezed. They will not, I mean, uh, they will not um, be separated again. And uh, you will uh, you will have to, I mean, you won't be able to use them again for the same reason. They will be jammed, right? So you have to grease them. This is one of the very important point, right? So this was something about the glasswares and the chemicals. Yes, I just explained that is two protein carboxylhydrate is needed. This is the main of our compound, right? And then acetic acid, glycerol acetic acid was used in this uh, reaction. Then again, uh, we needed uh, trioxane, right? It's a trimer as I just explained, right? And then we used concentrated sulfuric acid and acetic acid. Um, and then, of course, a little ice was needed, ice bath was created. And uh, then we used uh, chloroform and um, hexane mixture for further, I mean, process, which I will explain to, to you. So now, what will, uh, how we have started, I took uh, the, all the glassware was properly washed and uh, rinsed and then it was dried. Now, I, I hope everyone knows how you are going to wash it with a detergent and then you are going to rinse it with a solvent you are using mainly in your uh, solvents. What is the, your solvent system basically? So ba basically, we always rinse it with, an, uh, with alcohols, right? So you will rinse all the glasswares and then you will dry it in the oven. And these things are supposed to be ready before you are going to synthesize something your synthesis is starting yours these things are supposed to be ready all the things i mean the glass rods the test tubes whatever glassware you are using it is supposed to be washed number one then rinsed number two and then number three is of course it is supposed to be i mean uh, oven dried okay Fine. So now when you are, everything is ready, you will set up an assembly, right? Again, a hot plate. Then of course, on the hot plate, you have your, this three neck, uh, and your flask, round bottom flask, that is three neck, round bottom flask. Then you will attach all the things that is the condenser at one side, thermometer and the nitrogen inlet uh, nozzle that is uh, supplying the nitrogen gas to it, right? So you are going to uh, set up the assembly like that. And then of course you will um, tie it to the tap and you will open the condensers. Uh, condenser would be, I mean, uh, in the working state then, and then you are going to, I mean, your assembly is set up, is set up, is ready at that time. I will show you how I have, I mean, uh, set up the assembly. I, you will see my beautiful drawing in the end. Wait for that. In the end, you are going to see my drawing, beautiful drawing. Okay, so uh, this was, the starting, I took 17.8 ml. Now the compound name is, again, I'm going to re repeat, it's 5,5-methylene best to pyridine carboxyldehyde. And it's uh, name, it was abbreviated as MBPC. Fine, okay, I'll start now. So to, to this flask, that is 250 ml flask was recommended. 17.8 ml to pyridine carboxyldehyde was taken and poured, you can say, is in the liquid form. And then I added into it in the dropwise manner acetic acid that was glycerol acetic acid 12.5 ml was added into it. 
okay i mixed it with uh, by swirling it by mixing it and swirling it and i kept it at one side now in, in another flask i have to pre pre prepare another mixture that is mixture number two which uh, is composed of of course 1.75 grams of trioxane okay it was in white it is a white solid right trimer white solid in color it's white crystals are always very visible and it was dissolved in a mixture of 0.63 ml of as acetic acid, that is glacial acetic acid, and of course 0.13 ml of sulfuric acid, as concentrated sulfuric acid was taken. And uh, um, it, this whole mixture was, I mean, uh, I took a little bit of time in dissolving trioxane in this mixture with the help of a glass rod and swirling the plus and again mixing and swirling and mixing and swirling and with the passage of almost 10 to 15, uh, I mean 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes, it was ready. This mixture too was ready to be added to the first mixture, that is this one, this empty flask. This is not actually empty, it's the flask that contains the mixture, the first mixture that is uh, to pyridine carboxylhydride and of course our acetic acid waiting for us. Okay, so this mixture too was added into the mixture one. Again, uh, drop-wise, that is you have to add a drop and you have to soil, you have to add a drop and soil, drop and soil, drop and soil. And this way, I took almost 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes and mixing one compound to another, one mixture to another. Okay, so uh, that was something tiresome again, because you know, this mixing is very important and you should take some time. Uh, you should not, I mean, uh, be in a rush. There is no rush when you are mixing the, uh, the solvents together or a reaction mixture, one reaction mixture to another. I mean, you have to be a little bit patient. And yes, uh, with the, uh, in a drop-wise manner, you have added the second mixture to the first one. Fine. Now you have adjusted your temperature to 90 to 95 degrees Celsius, the temperature of the hot plate. And your th thermometer is there. It is constantly, it will monitor and it will tell you that uh, what is, it will show you the temperature and you will be constantly, your eyes should be fixed on your, I mean, reaction mixture and the thermometer, of course, and the nitrogen um, uh, gas uh, um, nozzle also, that whether the nitrogen bubbling is there, nitrogen is bubbling inside it or not, because nitrogen bubbles inside. And then you have to adjust the bubbles also of the nozzle according to the reaction, because the time period of this reaction is almost 22, 24 hours. So there shouldn't be a lot of bubbling of nitrogen. No, you only have to create an inert atmosphere, a nitrogen atmosphere. So so you have to, I mean, uh, adjust it to, uh, according to the uh, time that is uh, there, that is 24 hours, your cylinder is supposed to be uh, that much filled that it should, I mean, uh, provide the, the proper amount of gas during this whole time period, right? Okay, so when it was added into it, fine, okay. Now uh, you will uh, this leave the reaction mixture for about 22 hours. This will be left for 22 hours. That is, I mean, the whole day will pass. Okay, the next day you'll come uh, with, I mean, with the excitement again and with the scary feeling, that, oh my God, what? Because once when I entered in one of my trials, as I've mentioned that you are, you have to try it, it's never the you know the first time you achieved your you achieved all your goals you got your product now it's number of trials so it, during this journey of research journey during this synthesis I I mean come across a very scary experience that yeah when I entered into my lab the next day after 24 hours I saw that my lab my office oh, sorry my no, flask the reaction flask was I mean all uh, torn up it was it just uh, I mean blasted at uh, some moment I mean I was when I was not there and the whole com compound the solvent was uh, flown over the uh, I mean uh, on the walls I can see it on the walls and I mean the whole glass pieces were uh, spreaded on the floor and everywhere on the tables and everywhere so I I was extremely scared that thank god I was not there so some sometimes because maybe it was it happened due to the fluctuation in the temperature maybe I mean uh, a lot of I mean um, temperature was raised what happened i was not there nobody was monitoring it so you need to monitor your reaction please keep these things in your mind because i'm again explaining you the i mean things that i have encountered which you shouldn't should not 
I mean, come across. So that's why I'm saying that this, you are supposed to monitor the reaction full time. Though my reaction was also being monitored, but this has that happened. This, of course, this happened. So after 22 hours, after this, let's come back to our uh, uh, reaction. So after 22 hours, when I opened my lab door and I saw my reaction assembly was just fine, I was happy because I had that thing in my mind that yes, I was ready for everything, you know, and uh, we were extremely scared of our supervisor also that if we are not going to tell the supervisor what we have done, if something happens, we will not tell the supervisor. But, you know, supervisors are great. They are intelligent people. They know what their students are up to. So we were always caught. Okay, fine. So after 22 hours, I saw, yes, that my reaction was progressed smoothly. Uh, and of course, uh, I saw the, my, my product floating inside it and the magnetic bar was, oh, yes, a magnetic bar was there also. So it helped in keeping the atmosphere uh, homogeneous there inside the, I mean, it created a, uh, a homogeneous temperature inside the reaction mixture and uh, it, uh, uh, prevents bumping, right? It prevents uh, bumping of your uh, solvent. And uh, so uh, it, it was also, I mean, it was working and my reaction mixture was just fine. I closed the hot plate, okay? And then I took almost a 250 ml of water, right? In a very large beaker that is around 500 ml, ml speaker was taken. And then I started pour on it. It was filled with the crushed ice and I started pouring my reaction mixture. First, I kept it aside to hit the room temperature, right? It shouldn't be boiled, be like that, that you, you are going to, I mean, pour the boiling mixture onto the crushed ice. It was never like that. You have to do everything smoothly, slowly, and with the patience. So I kept my reaction mixture at one side of the table and I, um, I mean, I uh, let it hit the room temperature, let it reach the room temperature. So I waited till that moment and yes, when I'm, it, it was, uh, I mean, uh, a little bit uh, less warmer, right? So I started pouring it over the ice and I kept on stirring it and kept on pouring and kept on stirring and pouring and like that I uh, poured the whole reaction mixture over that crushed pieces of cold water, right? And then I, I mean, left it there and I did a vigorous stirring. Vigorous stirring was done again. I was holding it and I was stirring, holding it and I was stirring, 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 stirring. And I took almost 20 to 25 minutes in stirring. Only 20, 25 minutes I took for stirring because it was recommended. I have read in different literatures that you have to stir it till you start to get the product and you see that your product is, I mean, there it's settling down at the bottom or something is formed there, you know, because when you just pour it, it's a little bit um, oily. It's I mean, the mixture is oily and sometimes it's, I mean, full of uh, uh, precipitates loaded with precipitate, but it's never like that always. So you need patience again. So again, that mixture was, uh, uh, I mean, again, uh, left for precipitation for another 10 hours, right? You know, it was a lengthy process. This monomer was not formed that easily. So again, I left it for another period of 10 hours, recommended time period of 10 hours by covering it with a piece of some filter paper and I left it there again for the precipitation, though it was uh, vigorously stirred once and then it was um, left undisturbed for 10 hours. After 10 hours, I saw my product. Yes, the, I took out the beaker and I saw that, yes, my compound was ready. And my precipitates were ready. They were beautiful. They were heavy and they were, you know, a little bit, uh, they were not that much bouncy. If they are bouncy and they are floating on the top, I mean, that means you, feel like that maybe it's oil, few granules of oils were also found there, but uh, that was, I mean, when I stirred it vigorously, I again stirred it, stirred it, stirred it, stirred it, stirred it, and then, yes, it was all gone. Fine, I filtered my product, right, through Buckner's funnels, through suction filtration, and then um, I waited there and I did the washing. Again, the washing was done with the three solvents, as I have mentioned earlier, uh, that again, first, with the distilled water, I washed my precipitates. I, I mean, poured it over and I pulled on the suction so that it should 
I mean, I pulled off the suction so that the water should stay with the precipitates for some time there. And then I again put on the, the suction uh, filtration suction pump so that it can suck out all the solvent from that water, water from it and it ha that happened. Okay, then the next solvent again, I tried the next one that is the um, uh, ethanol. And I, uh, I mean, poured ethanol over it and, and I washed it with ethanol. And then of course, I, uh, th and the third solvent was ether which I took in a very little volume was taken because it was not that oily. So, uh, but just to get the crystals in a more purer form, more shinier form, so I poured a little bit drops of uh, ether also over the uh, my precipitates, right? And then I, again, uh, I mean, uh, uh, filtered the product, right? Product, the product was ready. It was beautiful. Uh, the whole uh, of the filtrate was sucked out. It was washed and it was beautiful. The crystals were just beautiful. Now I had my product, right? That is the 5,5-methylene-bis-2-pyridine carboxaldehyde MVPC was ready, but not in a pure form. So we do need to purify it through the procedure of, of course, recrystallization. So recrystallization was accomplished by using uh, chloroform and, and hexane. I make a mixture of chloroform and, and hexane and I mix them well and then I uh, recrystallized, uh, uh, I recrystallized them, uh, my compound. Okay, and uh, I got the product and you can see here, a recovered product was recrystallized with chloroform and hexane, right? And then it was dried in the, uh, these brown precipitates. You can see here, I got this beautiful product over here. This is my 5,5-methylene-bisperidine-2-carboxaldehyde. And you can see the brown precipitates, right? And these were then oven dried. That means I kept it in the oven for the period of nine hours, they were there at the temperature hitting around 70 degrees Celsius, right? And this was the, supposed to be the structure of my compound, which I got it in the end. Um, you can see 5,5-methylene, that is fifth, fifth position. You can see the methylene group, 5,5-methylene, bis 2 pyridine carboxaldehyde. I, I recorded the melting temperature through the gallon camp um, uh, melting uh, approaches and it was around 257 degrees celsius so it was the temperature was not that high the melting temperature was not that high so i was a little bit you know worried that maybe uh, i got my monomer or not but yes it was quite a heat resistant compound because i uh, uh, i did its thermogravimetric analysis and i got to know that yes it was just the fine it was just the awesome monomer formed so uh, i mean i ended up with this beautiful structure and with this beautiful, these beautiful precipitates in the end. So you can see these whole, I mean, steps starting from structure one, then of course mixture one, then mixture two, then the adding up of the second mixture to the first one in the dropwise manner. Then again, while well, waiting, stirring, and then waiting for such a long period that is 24 hours. And then again, I mean, uh, well, uh, Pouring it into the to get into something a solvent chosen to I mean get the precipitates uh, and then of course left it for again for precipitation for more again ten more hours then of course it was recrystallized and then it was oven dried and I got this beautiful brown product in the end. And of course, how, why, how I got to know that I got my product, how I got to know that yes, my compound is formed. I did its melting point, I recorded the melting point, I recorded, um, I recorded its uh, FTIR, and I got all those, I mean, functional groups there, the peaks of all those functional groups were there, which were supposed to be, I mean, present in my compound. And of course, yes, I sent this compound for my CHN analysis, and that assured me that, I mean, it closely related to the required values, to the given values. It was closely, the surgeon values were closely matching with my values. So, um, I mean, I was very happy 
because I accomplished finally what I was looking for and what I was, I mean, uh, it was hard to get in the beginning because, you know, you have to come across so many steps. You feel a little bit scared that, uh, oh my God, if something happens, if it will not form, if I will spoil the chemical, maybe I'm not going to get the crude product again. Maybe I'm not going to get the chemicals back again, right? Because these chemicals are very expensive. One bottle of, I think, pyridine to carboxylhydride was... Um, um, above uh, 20,000 rupees uh, uh, during those days. So uh, of, I think 250 ml or 500 ml bottle was, I mean, just because all were of uh, analytical grade. All these um, uh, were, were from the Merck company and uh, one more company was there. Used, usually I used to take from, use the, 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 the chemicals all from Merck. And Sigma, yes, Sigma and Eldritch. Eldritch, and the, yes, everything comes to my mind. Though I never read from my book, it just came to my mind. Yes, Sigma, Eldritch, and of course, Merck. These were the companies from these, and the, the chemicals I got from these, and we used to order them, and we used to get these chemicals, and we used to wait for them, them to reach Pakistan till, I mean, uh, that time we used to, I mean, our, our time used to be, I mean, a lot of time was wasted in waiting to get all these chemicals. So we were scared also that if these trials are not going to be, I mean, successful, we are going to lose our compound and whether, I don't know, we will be given the next chance or not. So these all fears are there when you are a researcher, when you are a student. So be brave and be confident that you will do it and definitely you will do it. If you have the courage, if you have, I mean, if you can dream it, you can do it. This is my, I mean, vision. If you can dream it, you can do it. Nothing is impossible. And when there's a will, there's a way. This is also one of my favorite quotes. When there's a will, there is a way, right? So uh, let's hit this last slide. I would like to show you my beautiful drawing. As I told you that don't go, please, in the end, just come across. let just enjoy my beautiful drawing. Today, I just drew this. I was just memorizing and I uh, drew this uh, beautiful reaction assembly setup. You can see here. I mean, this is a condenser, okay? This is a condenser, fine, which I just told you. And the, it is a three neck, basically, it's a three neck uh, round bottom flask of 250 mLs, right? And you can see a magnetic bar here stirring, right? This is your reaction mixture, my reaction mixture. This, um, uh, you can say it's a nitrogen gas tubing, okay? It is connected with a tubing. A tubing is connected to the cylinder. This is a cylinder over here, nitrogen gas cylinder. This supplying nitrogen gas to my reaction mixture. And here you can see this reflux condenser. Um, and here you can see a thermometer that is inside the reaction mixture to record the temperature, fine. And uh, we used to have these beautiful red, I mean, bulbed uh, thermometers. I just love this red bulbed thermometer fine. So this, uh, because we have to, I mean, uh, nitrogen gas was constantly, I mean, uh, being bubbled inside this reactor mixture because you have to create the inert atmosphere uh, inside the reaction flask, reaction flask. So this, this was the assembly setup. Uh, and this is my beautiful drawing, drawing, drawing by Dr. Moina Mughal. <laughs> so you have seen my drawing today. The basic concept was just to show you the assembly setup. Yes, of course, under this uh, um, round bottom flask, there is a hot plate, yes, or you can see that um, supporting jack is there, or um, and then over that uh, hot plate is there so that you can easily, uh, I mean, lower your flask, or you can, uh, you can, I mean, make it a little bit upper, or you can lower down the flask, I mean, so it's like that. So, uh, I mean, this was the assembly setup. I have written also heading the assembly setup for reflecting the reaction mixture in an in a atmosphere. This, this is how I've gone through, uh, I mean, uh, all the steps of my, um, this beautiful, I mean, uh, uh, pro beautiful, uh, I mean, experience of uh, getting my product in the end. So this was the product. You can see my monomer, MBPC. I can show you its picture. This is MBPC, and this is my monomer, which I got in the end. So um, I hope you liked the, today's video, and you like all the steps 
though I was, I mean, uh, I was distracting it with other, my other, one of my experiences, because this is, I just told you, it's not, I mean, a reading, I'm not reading a book, though my thesis is with me, it's with me, I'm just uh, going through the steps from this also, because it's, uh, it's been seven years when I, I since I did my PhD, so uh, I uh, forgot a lot of things, but, uh, you know, uh, I, still tried my level best to uh, make you understand how I crossed all this, uh, I mean, um, these steps, how I passed all these steps, though they were very difficult. There were many ups and downs during those times, but still I did it and I wanted to share my experience so that you can also get, if anybody is interested in this type of a work, you can get, you will be benefited from this uh, video. So please, if you like it, you can share it with your friends or with everyone you can uh, find who is interested in. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's come back to the, uh, again to the end. Okay, so that was all about 5,5-methylene-bisferidine uh, to carboxyldehyde. Uh, I hope you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed all the steps. You, will you have learned all the steps. I mean, this is nothing enjoyable, but this is something to learn more. So you, you uh, might have learned all the steps and uh, I hope this will help you out in uh, synthesizing a monomer in future, how you're going to synthesize a monomer. And this monomer was really very effective because it uh, gave me the chance to to um, synthesize a lot of uh, shape-based resins and shape-based polymers from this uh, by condensing it with this monomer. So this was very helpful and it gave a lot of great results after that. Though because it was a tough compound initially, it was so pungent, so irritating. And, uh, but you have to, you know, I mean, you have to face everything when you need to accomplish, when you wish to accomplish something. So, uh, I mean, uh, I hope uh, you will like it and you will enjoy this. You have enjoyed this video and you will share it with your friends and you will uh, you will maybe you will uh, you will you have going learn some points from it and uh, it maybe it will help you out in uh, i mean uh, in uh, progressing with your reaction right maybe it will uh, work out the same way it worked out for me so thank you very much see you in my next lecture with something new something more interesting something more uh, I mean, entertaining too, because you know, uh, it has to be. It has to be entertaining also, so that you can, I mean, uh, have some uh, interest in it, following it. So goodbye. See you again.